The modern economy presents a dilemma. While the job market is improving and growth is increasing, the private sector is not experiencing a significant resurgence in the expected areas. Despite official statistics indicating economic recovery, there seems to be a disconnect between this data and the reality of the private sector. It seems that Walmart's stock has been experiencing a decline, which highlights the disparity in economic recovery. In 2013, retail sales grew by 4.2% overall, but only 2.7% when accounting for inflation. Okay, let's start by admitting that Walmart plays a big role in daily life. It's a popular place for many people to shop for anything, from home goods to food and apparel. Middle-class families, meanwhile, have recently begun to worry more and more that Walmart is slipping out of reach. So what exactly is happening here? First things first, let's take a quick look at how Walmart developed into the colossus it is today. Walmart once completely transformed the retail sector by bringing a large variety of goods together under one roof and at very low rates. It soon established itself as the go-to spot for middle-class people trying to stretch their hard-earned money. But nothing lasts forever. As the saying goes, there is only one boss, the customer, and he can fire everybody in the company from the chairman on down simply by spending his money somewhere else, Sam Walton. I can provide a few possible explanations for why Walmart may become too expensive for the middle class. Rising expenses. Retailers like Walmart may pass some of these expenses along to customers through increasing prices. If operational costs rise due to inflation, modifications to labor rules or supply chain disruptions. Wage disparity. Families may find it increasingly difficult to buy daily needs at big box stores like Walmart as middle class wage growth may not keep up with inflation and the growing cost of living. Product mix and quality. If Walmart changes its product lineup to include more high-end or premium goods, middle-class shoppers may find the pricing more prohibitive. Market positioning. Walmart may concentrate on luring high-income clients, resulting in more expensive goods and services and possibly alienating its steadfast middle-class clientele. Competition and consolidation. Walmart may have more influence over price if there is less competition in some markets or fewer rivals due to industry consolidation, making it more difficult for customers to locate cheaper choices. Regional discrepancies. The cost of items at Walmart stores around the country can also be impacted by economic discrepancies between distinct areas or nations, changing consumer preferences. If shoppers start favoring more expensive or specialized goods, Walmart may change its selection to satisfy these needs, perhaps leaving behind more affordable products. We need to consider some important factors to understand the problem of Walmart's pricing increases. One of the main factors is the increasing cost of production. Since Walmart sources its products from different parts of the world, any global increase in production costs will also reflect in the prices of those goods. I understand that you may be thinking that inflation and production costs aren't the only factors at play here, and I completely agree. The increasing dominance of Walmart in the market is a crucial element to consider. As a major participant in the retail sector, they have the power to effectively set prices for certain goods. When Walmart decides to raise prices, it can put pressure on all of its competitors to do the same. This ultimately has a ripple effect on prices overall, impacting not just Walmart's customers, Customers, but also the wider public. If you want the people in the stores to take care of the customers, you have to make sure that you're taking care of the people in the stores. That's the most important single ingredient of Walmart's success. Sam Walton. Doug Stevens has stated that Walmart's strategy is no longer focused on the middle class, which used to be their primary target audience. In the 1960s, retailers struggled to keep up with the growth of the middle class as families were expanding, wages were rising, and people were moving to the suburbs. Walmart was able to capitalize on this trend. However, now that the middle class is shrinking, department stores and big box retailers relying on the middle class are forced to change their business models or face bankruptcy. According to Stevens, the rise of dollar stores is attributed to more people moving from the middle class to the working class. 
If Walmart is going to succeed, they must attract higher income consumers. As we look at the current economic climate, there have been significant changes. The expenses of running a business are increasing, while the middle class is finding it difficult to increase their earnings. And costs are going up. Walmart, like any other company, is vulnerable to these changes. With the rise of inflation, the cost of goods, transportation, and staff compensation is steadily increasing, forcing Walmart to make necessary adjustments. Due to these rising expenses and slim profit margins, Walmart is becoming less affordable for the middle class. To cover these costs, they have to increase the pricing of many products, which could negatively impact consumers mindful of their spending habits. In order to have a meaningful conversation about Walmart's affordability, it's vital to acknowledge the growing wealth gap in our society. Sadly, the burden of this inequality often falls on the middle class. While wealthier individuals have the freedom to spend their money as they please, middle class families often struggle to make ends meet. Walmart's pricing structure exacerbates this problem, places added strain on already tight budgets, influenced by a variety of factors. What does Walmart's future hold for its middle class customers? That's a hard one, to be sure. Given the retail environment's ongoing fast evolution, it's difficult to forecast precisely how Walmart will modify and tweak its pricing approach. To remain relevant among middle class consumers, Walmart must find a balance between profitability and affordability. The route they choose will only become clear with time. And that, my friends, is all. We've examined the difficulties associated with Walmart's accessibility to the middle class. Increasing expenses, decreasing profit margins, changing brand strategies, challenges from the stock market, and rising income inequality are just a few of the pieces that make up this complicated picture. Sam Walton once said, It's true that I was 44 when we opened our first Walmart in 1962, and like most other overnight successes, it was about 20 years in the making. It is surprising to learn that Walmart's pricing strategy extends beyond simply increasing the costs of its products. They also prioritize providing a diverse selection of high-quality options. This means that while affordable choices are available, more expensive items may not be accessible to everyone. As a result, the middle class is impacted in a significant way. Their finances are strained as they previously relied on Walmart's affordability. Now, they must carefully consider their purchases and budgets accordingly. Some may even need to shop at other stores and use different strategies to make ends meet. Before we conclude, it's important to recognize customers' significant role. Our buying decisions can shape the future. Supporting companies that promote fair wages and environmentally sustainable practices while offering reasonable alternatives is vital. Walmart's increasing prices are affecting the middle class. While this topic is complex, with many factors at play, acknowledging them helps consumers make informed choices.